Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and I've been playing with the LG G3 for a little while. I've been very impressed. I think it's a very solid outing for LG, especially uh, compared to the other flagship phones out on the market. And uh, we've been seeing some really positive uh, stuff from the camera. We have a, an HD and a UHD camera review of the camera shooting video. Then we recently did a photo walk down in Santa Monica where I had the opportunity to compare the G3 with the Galaxy S5. Now, one of the things I noticed while walking around with the G3 versus the Galaxy S5 was uh, even though we've got some fantastic laser focus and optical image stabilization built into this camera lens, there's still times where I, I feel that LG's camera app is struggling a little bit to nail the exposure. And so that's the primary thing I want to talk about today and how I would fix LG's camera app. Now, one quick note before we jump into the rest of the review. Uh, this is just a cool tip that I just found out about in looking up the camera settings that apparently there's a long press option for the camera on the volume. So while the screen is off, if you long press the down volume rocker, it'll automatically launch the camera. I mean, even double tapping on the screen to wake it up and then sliding the camera setting is just long enough that you might miss a photo. And I still haven't found any phone that can get you into the camera as quickly as say an iPhone 5S. But shortcuts like these and the dedicated camera buttons that we have on Nokia phones definitely help improve the experience of getting into our camera apps quickly. All right, so launching the camera app with this back button here. You can tell LG's made an effort to simplify the camera experience on the G3. Uh, whereas before, previous cameras like the camera on the G2 or the G Flex, they were definitely sort of falling into the Samsung trap of throwing in tons and tons and tons of different features and settings. Here, we've wiped all of that out for the, the most efficient way to capture photos and images. In fact, when you first fire up the LG camera, this is all you're going to see. Uh, some autofocus squares just to detect what might be in front of the camera, and then a back button to get you out of the camera and then tapping on the screen will focus and automatically take the photo. We can see where those photos end up here in the tiny little bubble in the right-hand corner. But we like to tweak settings, and a number of important features are actually built into this camera. So if you want to enable grid lines, very, very faint rule of third grid lines will pop up. We've got our resolution controls, and, and I like leaving it widescreen. I'm, I, even if I were shooting full res, I'd probably be cropping it widescreen anyway, so I tend to leave that at 10 megapixels. And I, and I often leave the video at 1080p just because UHD is ridiculously huge video sizes to, uh, to work with. And we've got sort of an HDR toggle, and this is about as close as we get to having any kind of exposure control on the LG G3. So you can have HDR always on, you can have HDR auto, so the phone will decide <laughs> when you should be taking an HDR photo. And then uh, I typically leave most of my cameras as HDR off, unless I think that there's an opportunity for a fun contrasty or high dynamic range situation to utilize an HDR effect. The problem with full auto is I find most phone camera apps tend to overexpose the scene. We're looking for vivid colors, bright images, crisp images, and almost always in brightly lit scenes, I kind of find that the highlights start to clip. They start to get a little overexposed. You start to lose information and detail in the brightest parts of your scene. And there are really two aspects to this, metering and exposure. And you can't control either on the G3. You're sort of stuck with the camera making all of those decisions for you and the camera often being wrong. So if you watch the video that I uploaded comparing the stills from the G3 and the Galaxy S5, you'll notice right away that highlights are almost always brighter on the G3. And sometimes that's attractive, but most of the time it means colors get a little washed out and you start to lose detail. And so anytime I find myself in a situation where I need just that little bit more control, I need some metering control or I need some exposure control, it means I have to go to another camera app. The two camera apps that I load on every Android phone that I use are Vignette and the Google camera app. Now the Google camera interface is very similar to what the G3 provides. It's a super stark, very, very clean, very, very simple interface, but it comes with one important benefit, and that is the ability to control exposure. And so tapping on this little icon here, you can go down, say I wanna underexpose this a stop or two stops, or you know, maybe the scene's really dark and I wanna blow something up. You can set it up for a brighter exposure too. And just having this one feature and knowing how to use it will almost always improve just about every photo you take on your phone. So I've switched over to a Galaxy S5 for just a second so I could show off one other aspect that I think would really help the G3 camera, and that's metering. So in metering, you can tell the camera what is it you're looking for to determine how bright or how dark the scene should be. And typically you'll get one of these three options. They'll probably be called different things in different camera apps and on different cameras, but they all amount to kind of the same technique for judging brightness in the scene. 
and one is center weighted. So if you do center weighted, then it looks at the middle of the frame and it figures that's what I need to judge bright or dark off of. Now, I don't really love center weighted because I like to pull my subject off to the sides of the frame. You know, if you're following the rule of thirds and your subject's kind of in this upper left hand corner, then metering off of the center of the frame never really made a lot of sense to me. You can get around that by going to something like matrix. And Matrix takes a general scan over the entire frame, and then it judges brightness or darkness based on what might be clipping in the corners or if you're underexposing in the sides. Uh, it, it takes that total scan. And I actually like Matrix better than center weighted. But the metering mode that I tend to stick with the most is spot metering. And spot metering follows your cues on where you focus the camera. So if I focus on that corner of the mug, it's going to take the metering cue off of where I just dropped the focus. And so let's say I was starting to clip the highlights here on this eye, it'll pull the metering off of the eye and you'll see that the background actually gets subtly darker based on these little highlights here. If I wanna take the, uh, the focus on this uh, bottle, it'll look at like, well, that, scene, that part of the scene is really bright. So I'll all underexpose because you told me that that was what you were focused on, that that's what's important to you in this scene. So spot metering for me tends to deliver the most consistent results because it's taking its cues off of you. You told the phone, focus here. And once it focuses there, it'll also meter from there. And then you can tell it, well, I want this a little bit darker. So let's say I wanna underexpose it a stop based on the brightest part of this eyeball. And it's that combination which is important, the combo of metering mode and exposure control. And those two settings alone provide me far better results than any other gimmicky fireworks mode or waterfall mode, silhouette mode, cherry pie a la mode. So folks, I've really been enjoying the camera experience on the G3. I think it's probably as good as a one third inch sensor can get these days. I don't really think LG has anywhere to go in improving the hardware experience until they move to a larger sensor. However, while I really do like that their software experience has now shifted to simplicity, ease of use and speed, I really do wish that they would give us just a bit more control for some of these other settings. And I think if you're really looking at your phone as some kind of content creation device, like you're taking photos, you're blogging, you're vlogging, you're shooting video, having things like metering modes and exposure controls will make a huge difference in your ability to control the output of your camera. So folks, do you have a G3? Have you been shooting photos and video on it? Uh, share that stuff with me. I wanna follow you guys on Instagram. I wanna follow you guys on Twitter, on Google+. Give me a follow back, it'll be fun. I really like to see what you guys are up to and what you guys are working on. And of course that goes for any of the other phones that you guys might be using as well. As always folks, thanks so much for watching my videos, sharing my videos, subscribing to my channel, leaving me all those amazing comments down below my videos. I've always enjoyed the conversations we get into. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.